Recently, Hasselblad announced a 400 megapixel camera, and a majority of the feedback that I've read online about this has been either, ooh, I really want that, or that's really exciting. And the only people who really pay attention to this kind of thing are other photographers. But the use cases for 400 megapixels are so limited that I don't understand why we're praising Hasselblad so broadly for it. I like resolution, but at a certain point, it doesn't make any sense, and I'm getting real sick of the megapixel wars. Very recently, I was actually having a discussion internally with the team at Imaging Resource regarding the uses for even 100 megapixels. Uh, I have several 100 megapixel photos that I've taken, and I still, to this point, could not figure out what I was going to do with them. Like, what was the benefit of having that much resolution? And the more we chatted, the more I realized that the, my, one of my favorite photos that I've ever taken was with a 100 megapixel camera. But the place that I show it the most, the place that I see it the most and show it to other people, is here on my phone. It's the background of my phone. And when I show it to other people, it's on my phone. I don't need 100 megapixels for this. So we started discussing what would I need 100 megapixels for, and obviously it's printing. But most prints that you'll see, you do yourself or anywhere else, they're, you know, not humongous. Like they're not, they don't need to be that big, like 11 by 17, 17 by 22, whatever. Then other people will say, well, what about billboards or walls? To which the, the response is, you actually don't need that much resolution for something like a billboard because it's not meant to be viewed very close. The farther away you are, the less actually resolution you need. The pixels can be larger. So when you have a 100 megapixel camera, the only use case I could think of for that kind of resolution is to print it enormous and also choose to view it from extremely close. So then we started talking about, well, let's try that. How big can we get a print and how close can you view it? We did some research and of the many print houses we could have gone with, we decided on White Wall for a couple reasons. One, uh, we had heard nothing but great stuff about their print work and uh, everyone that we talked to that did printing through them loves their stuff. And two, I personally saw a print at a trade show a couple years ago and also this last year at uh, Photo Plus of uh, that they call uh, HD, Ultra HD print. And what it does is it makes sharp images look even sharper and bounce, basically bounce off the print. Like it looks really good. So we decided to go with them because I feel like that would be the best place for us to maximize the use of our resolution. But when we looked on their website, we didn't see a size that really jumped out to us as being truly massive. So we called them and asked what was the largest print they were capable of making, the biggest print that their printer could, could give us edge to edge. And they told us the best that they could do was 70 by 48 inches. So we uploaded the 100 megapixel image that I shot, we gave them the custom size of 70 by 48 and sent it off for printing. Our goal here was to see exactly what 100 megapixels was gonna get us on the largest possible print that they can make. Pardon the notepad, we got a lot of numbers to go over here. So this is the final finished hung print. It takes up basically the entire back wall of my office. This file here that was used to print this at 100 megapixels was 11,608 by 8,708 pixels. That seems like a lot. But I really wanted to know for sure what was the maximum resolution that White Wall thought that they could get out of something this big. Now they were saying at us estimating 300 DPI, which is the maximum that they think that they could get something printed. 
they said that they could print this, we just do a little bit of math, 300 dpi by 72 is 21,600, and then 300 times 48, the other side, is 14,000. So 21,600 by 14,000 pixels. Now since I only had 11,600 by 8,700 or so, you would think, okay, yeah, that's what you need 400 megapixels for. You can get the maximum resolution out of a print this size. Well, sort of. Because we have to remember the viewing distance of something like this. So we would assume that the viewing distance of a print is approximately two to two and a half times the diagonal length of a print. That would be the ideal area. In that case, since this is approximately six feet across, we're looking at, you know, 12 to 15 feet is the a really good viewing distance to really take in the entire photo from a specific range. And honestly, my office is not that large. I think what we're looking at here is maybe 10 feet from where I'm sitting to the camera. And this camera is much wider than the human eye. So this is actually a little closer than you would expect. And at 4K resolution, you should be able to get a good idea of how this looks, minus the glare from the window over there. So if that's the maximum resolution, but the viewing distance is so far away, well then what would the minimum resolution be? When you look at an Ultra HD print, it's going to be slightly more than a regular print. They're saying a regular print without Ultra HD, about 3000 by 2000 pixels would be all they needed. But for an Ultra HD print like this, they were saying 4600 by 3066 would be all they would need to make a gigantic 70 by 40 inch print, 72 by 48, whatever it was, like this, and actually be able to enjoy it from the recommended viewing distance of 12 feet. So that's actually considerably less than what I even shot it at, and definitely less than the maximum resolution they said that would make any difference. What this print is, is basically in the middle somewhere. Not the worst, but not the best. But it's 100 megapixels, and we really wanted to see, well, how close could you get to it? Well, let me show you. As you can see, and it's, I, I'm hoping you can actually trust this, I mean, I'm using as high a resolution of a camera as I can, but you can get right up next to this thing, basically put your nose to it and not see any pixels, not see any loss in quality. And I brought in about eight friends and asked them all to take a look at this print and view it in here from any distance they wanted. And all of them thought that this print looked great no matter where they stood. The human eye has approximately, it's been guessed at, uh, 576 megapixels. But our view is much more than just what a print is. Even viewed up close, where this is taking up my entire field of vision, I'm not seeing degradation of quality. Especially if I'm 12 feet back and I'm seeing the print plus everything around it, it, it it's definitely crystal clear and sharp. So if I have a 100 megapixel camera and I am overshooting the, the minimum requirements for a print this size, and I can't see a loss in quality, why the heck am I going to need 400 megapixels? Look, I understand that 400 megapixels is something awesome for maybe archival photography where you're trying to log paintings or some sort of heritage objects that you want to have just as much of it as possible for keeping for the future. But that's not what's exciting photographers. That's not why people got excited about the 400 megapixel camera. They're saying they want to shoot with that. But that doesn't make any sense. We don't need 400 megapixels. We hardly need 100 megapixels. No one hardly ever prints at anything this size. And if they do, it's not going to be meant to be viewed from this close. But you can with 100. So there, that begs the question, what possible use could an everyday photographer have for anything greater than 100 megapixels? And the answer is there isn't one. In all fairness, I have to say, this looks absolutely incredible. Like, if you're going to shoot with big megapixels and you're going to print, you got to do it like this. Whitewall did an incredible job here, and this is easily going to be a statement piece for me for the rest of my life. This print is fantastic, and if you ever get an opportunity to shoot high megapixel and also print at a way that will make those megapixels matter, I absolutely urge you to do it. 
But like I said earlier, you don't need 100 megapixels to make a picture like this look good. You could probably get away with 50, or 42, or 48. There are so many cameras on the market right now, many of you probably own them, that are capable of producing a print like this. So let's stop fawning over massive megapixels and start putting a lot more of our praise into camera achievements that matter. ISO, dynamic range, ergonomics, weatherproofing, everything else, battery performance, all of these things actually matter more to producing a great picture than number of megapixels. So earlier I asked, what the heck do you need 400 megapixels for? Hell, what do you need 100 megapixels for? Almost nothing.